Defensive Player of the Year, Isaiah Land. Everybody's looking for me to play. Isaiah Land. Isaiah Land. I'm on the front of every picture leading into UNC game. They gonna know, like I'm not gonna hold my tongue. <laughs> He was one of the best HBCUs in the country. There was issues with eligibility. Eligibility concerns. 89 players are now calling on the university to fix issues. One of the more challenging days in FAMU football's history. Tar Heels taking on Florida A&M tomorrow night in Chapel Hill in the HBCU celebration game. The Rattlers, they've got a big chance to make an impression against North Carolina. <laughs> All camp, all the scouts, even my coaches, they all telling me, like, that's going to be the game. They saying, like, my whole jazz stock is is banking on UNC game. You know, the North Carolina game was kind of going to be that game that we showed that we belong on that national stage against a Power 5 opponent. Just before making the trip to North Carolina, Rattlers head coach Willie Simmons says at least 20 players were ruled ineligible to play. 20 players on FAMU's football team deemed ineligible due to either academic reasons or to transfer rules. It wasn't guys being ineligible. Guys just wasn't certified. Everybody is making it seem as though, OK, these guys not going to class. They're not doing everything they're supposed to, and we were. I really kind of brushed it off because I passed all my classes. So it was no way I could just be sat down because of their mistakes. So I really wasn't stressing about it and probably until like Monday of game week. It came to uh, the day that we traveled to UNC. It's when we realized like, dang, we're, we're missing players and this will affect us at the game. Coach Simmons, he called the seniors into a meeting that morning and he said, hey man, it's not fair. You know, this happened to me 19 years ago and it's still happening to this day. The, the sheer number, you know, 26 out of 110 guys, that's a pretty significant percentage of guys, almost 25%. But then when you hear that Isaiah Land and B.J. Bowler and Cameron Colvin and some of your marquee players, uh, it, it was devastating. I don't want the focus to be taken away from the bulk of this team that has done more than we've ever asked to represent this university. Hey, Lucy, Lucy. Here we go, hand Lucy, up. TJ, ready, set. <laughs> We had eventually came to the decision that we're going to sit out this game if we can't get at least the O-line. Not that I don't talk them, but we can't afford to have freshmen on the O-line at ACC team and they injure our starting quarterback. The buses were still at the field house at a time where the team should have been up in the air. Willie Simmons was made aware of the situation and he left it up to the seniors on this team whether they wanted to travel and play this game. We came together as a team and we thought like, we, we got to make a change. We got we to gotta say something. We can't stay quiet. We wasn't going to be hurt unless we take a stand. So we was trying to take that stand, not only for the guys who weren't playing, but for the university and athletics as a whole. Communication is key. Hour or two later, like, five people got clear, like, just within an hour of us saying we're not going. And that, that kind of opened my eyes, because, like, it wasn't going to get handled unless we did that. Like, it would probably still be 26 people in that as well right now if we would have never did that. I believe that wholeheartedly. After the game, guys got back uh, late that evening, and they decided that they wanted to, to release a public statement uh, to the president to talk about some of the things that they had encountered as students here at Florida a &M. Dr. Robinson. We, the members of the 2022 Rattler football team, would like to address several issues that are having an adverse effect on our lives, our future, and the student-athlete experience at FAMU. We, as a senior leadership group, we just talked and we just wanted to know, like, how could we get people to hear us? How can we get people to, you know, understand what we're going through, understand our pain? Each semester, we have issues with our financial awards being posted in a timely manner. 
This delay in funds has repeatedly left us unable to pay for our basic daily needs. Us doing that was really just to open the world's eyes on what we go through as college athletes. I feel like most schools like Georgia, Alabama, they don't go through this type of stuff as a team. I feel like that's why they're able to win championships because their players don't have to worry about being late on rent. They don't have to be worried about their FAFSA check never coming in. Some of us didn't have summer aid and, and some of us were sleeping on, on the floor. Some players were sleeping in the locker room because they didn't have, you know, a place to stay. Dr. Robinson. When we signed our letter of intent to become student athletes at FAMU, we agreed to perform at our peak in the classroom, on the field, and in the community. How can we realistically be expected to perform at a high level? We're concerned with having adequate academic resources and whether or not we will have a roof over our heads and nourishment for our bodies. We living under these conditions in a season, and then we have to go out and play games. Then we have to go up and go to class. We have to get up and go to practice, workouts, and we going through these conditions where some guys not eating, some guys not having places to stay. It doesn't have a lot to do with academics. We just need support. Like, for example, my previous school, we had great advisors, but we had several. We have one academic advisor. We already behind. Dr. Robinson, this letter is not a personal attack. But a demand for positive change and a cultural shift in the current direction in FAMU athletics. We came to FAMU to better our lives, and we are expressing concerns about impediments to that goal. We just want people to provide that help for us, that stability for us, to where we could give it our all on the field each and every day, to where we can just, you know, play freely and not have to worry about where my next meal gonna come from. Am I gonna be able to play? Am I gonna have somewhere to sleep? And it wasn't no disrespect, it was just, you know, standing up, and we just want the same love that we give out on the field. We just want that same love reciprocated. I don't know if they're gonna fix these issues or whether it's just gonna be another, you know, we're gonna talk to the president, gonna sweep under the rug type of deal. And next thing you know, you know, it's all over Twitter, all over the media, all over the news. People sending me videos like, hey, you know, what's going on over at FAMU? Y'all good? Our first day of training camp, you know, we talked to our team uh, about our, our program philosophies. For us, we call it our seven Fs. The first one is faith, uh, and then one of them is fight. And that's what these guys have had to do over the last, you know, week or so. I think many people have tried to spin it to, to say it was an all-out assault or an attack on our administration. It was not. Uh, it was young people saying, hey, here's some issues that we feel we're facing, and we need to figure out what we're going to do about it. And so the president of the university decided to call the meeting. He brought his entire uh, administrative team with him, um, and, and they had open dialogue. You know, these are some, some very smart, capable, intelligent young men who brought some issues forward that, you know, we need to take a look at and to sort of work within the parameters that we allowed around using state funds to support athletics, we are beefing up our compliance unit where we'll be adding you know, five new compliance persons there with specific expertise in, in athletics-related issues. But we also got to invest more in the, the, the athletes themselves, and we help them with, you know, lodging, meal plans, et cetera, because they are still part of a demographic whose annual household income is less than $50,000. Our institution is 134 years old, if you take Florida and M University and the three private HBCUs in the state of Florida, I, I believe that we are largely responsible for the emergence of the black middle class in the state. And that transformation, that, that commitment to making a difference in the lives of students in their communities still continues to this day. I'm extremely proud of our guys' resiliency the way they advocated for themselves and, and came together as a group to take a stand. I think we grew tremendously as a, as a brotherhood, as a football team. We were doing it not just for us, because we're literally out the door, we're seniors, it's our last season. So we won't ever deal with this uh, again. We're doing it for generations to come. We don't want the incoming freshmen to, to deal with the stuff that, that we're dealing with. Our voice is bigger than we think. Our power is bigger than we may know. So 
even though it's just the beginning and this just the tip of the iceberg, it's still stuff that we have to handle, but you let people know what you're going through and you stand firm on how you feel, then, you know, things will begin to change. You can be heard, you can be seen. Don't be afraid to speak up about anything because you're a human being and you deserve food, housing, your financial aid, disbursement, all, time, all of that good things. And unfortunately, that's kind of just like the stigma at HBCUs, you know, you're gonna get it, but you know, it may not be when you want it, or you're gonna get it, but it may not be, you know, how it should. We want all HBCU athletes to be heard and seen and to be helped properly. I think it has a lot to do with the perception and really the reality around resources. The question is, do you have enough to satisfy the needs of the young men and women in your athletic program? Bigger doesn't necessarily lead to better outcomes. Uh, you know, that's one of the things we've done well you know, throughout our history, uh, you know, we've done some out outstanding things, having less resources than some of our counterparts, right? Give us the opportunity to level the playing field so that the gap doesn't continue to grow between the haves and the have-nots. And that could be said about, you know, collegiate athletics. Now, that can be said about us as a people, right? We, we gotta come together, pool our resources, and figure out how to continue to ascend in, in, in this climate. That, that type of stuff, like makes you stronger in life. I really just decided to just get it out the mud. I feel like I just get out the mud at FAMU. And I just like that feeling, getting out the mud. Cause it means more when we win.